Are we alone in the universe? Yes. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next... Or... Or... We are not alone in the universe. Is it possible that there is another species or race out there that can communicate with us? This question has been asked ever since we've discovered the true scale of the cosmos. And today, I'm gonna to teach you just one way we could find a possible answer. Hello everyone, and a warm welcome to the Simon Dan Show, the place where we set phases to knowledge. If you didn't like that joke, I didn't write it. Blame the editor. My name is Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Frank Drake is a former chairman of the SETI's Institute Board of Trustees. SETI standing for Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. He held numerous professors of astronomy positions throughout his career, but is probably most famous for the Drake Equation. First proposed by Dr. Drake in 1961, his equation calculates the number of potential civilizations that can communicate within this Milky Way. It is essentially used as a way to find the odds of finding an intelligent species out there that's able to communicate. And it looks like this. I invite you to grab a pen and some paper and follow along. The N is the number of civilizations in our galaxy where communication may be possible. The R is the average rate of star formation. FP is the fraction of stars with planets orbiting them, and NE is the average number of planets that can support life per star. FL is the fraction of those planets that can go on to support life, and Fi is the fraction of those planets that will then support intelligent life. Fc is the fraction of the intelligent life planets that go on to discover communicative technology, and the big L on the end is the length of time any of those said civilizations will broadcast signals into space. As you can see, it is quite comprehensive, but I must stress, we do not have exact values for most of those variables. However, we're gonna work through this equation today being as strict as we possibly can with the numbers and using the most up-to-date information that we have available. The whole time we'll be very, very conservative and at the end we should have a rough estimation at the amount of civilizations within our galaxy that are both intelligent and can communicate. Okay, let's start with R, the average rate of star formation. We actually know this one quite well based on the studies we've done so far on the stars in the Milky Way. The NASA Goddard Space Center studied supernova explosions of nearby stars to get an excellent estimate of the rate of new star formation. And it turns out that it's around 5 to 15, but we're gonna go with the lowest five. So we'll place a five in there. Next up is the fraction of planets with stars orbiting them. Well, we know that many, many star systems already exist, and from the manner in which stars form, it would be almost impossible for them to form without planets orbiting them. However, some star systems may only have two or three planets, not eight like ours. So we'll be conservative here and say 0.8. Okay. NE is the average number of planets that can support life around a star. For this we're getting rid of anything not in the Goldilocks zone, which is the region of space where liquid water is likely to exist, and we'll bin off any of the gas giants. Can't really stand on those. Again, we will be conservative and say an average only one planet per star system is in this zone. FL is the fraction of those planets that can go on to support life. Now, this is where we really get into the guessing part of the Drake equation, but we will definitely go with a lower estimate. For life to form, we need water, as well as an atmosphere, so we're talking about a very small chance here, perhaps one in 1,000. So, let's go with 0.001. Right, out of those planets that can support life, how many of them will 
go on to produce some form of intelligent life. Well, we know that's not impossible as we are here right now thinking about it, but again the chances are small, say 1%, so let's place 0.01 in there. Next up is the chance that intelligent life will go on to create technology that would allow them to communicate. Personally, I think if a race can reach intelligence it's only a matter of time before they can communicate and naturally it would want to do so. Perhaps half the species out there will go on to do this? With that in mind I think 0.5 is a fair estimate here. Finally, we move on to the amount of time that said civilizations would broadcast any signal into space. Now, this is difficult as we've only been doing it for around 100 years. If we scaled down the history of Earth, all 4.6 billion years of it, and crammed it into a 24 hour clock, then humans only appeared at 11.58 and 43 seconds pm. In terms of our ability to communicate, we're probably talking less than the last second before midnight. Let's look at the galaxy as a whole though, and given the age of it being 13.5 billion years, it'd be fair to say that 100,000 years is a very low estimate for this value. Yes, we've only been broadcasting ourselves for around 100 years, but we developed relatively late in the galaxy's life. Putting all of this into our calculator, we get a very conservative two populations. Well, we are one of them, so who knows? It is very important to mention here that people do this all the time and get very different values for the end number. From 0.0000001 civilizations at the lower end of the estimates to over 10,000 civilizations at the higher. At the end of the day, this was just a bit of fun, using our logical skills to deduce the likelihood of any intelligent species in our galaxy as well as us. I, for one, think there absolutely has to be. What do you guys think? Right, that brings this episode and the first season of the Simon Dan Show to a close. I hope you enjoyed it. I had loads of fun. Season two is already in the works, so keep your eye out for that. For now, I have been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a fantastic day, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.